So, Scott, we have the S&P 500 here right at 5,500, up about a half a percent. Of course, the mega cap group doing its job as usual to get us there. I know your posture is that, you know, we might have some further upside into year end, but you're anticipating a possible summer squall, as you call it. Make the case for that. Well, I think it, it begins with the fact that from a valuation perspective, the S&P has moved towards its top decile over the past 20 years. So we have to acknowledge that that is a concern. But the concern really is the implication that it, and, and pressure that it puts on, on fundamentals to deliver. And there are implied growth measures now at levels that we haven't seen this high uh, since the tail end of 21. So from that starting point, our concern is that the market is beginning to price in a growth expectation that may be difficult for uh, companies one by one to meet, particularly given the ongoing strain that we're seeing on underlying economic conditions. Um, and then you combine that with strong flows into the uh, mega cap growth tech and uh, core arena and a euphoric sentiment read all suggest to us that we do have to be prepared for a pullback at some point as the summer unfolds. So would you do anything to prepare for that tactically or, or to be ready to, to act upon it if it comes in various parts of the market? You know, the way that we're trying to position for this is that we've gone to a market weight on tech and communication services. So we're suggesting hold that mega cap growth core. We appreciate the fundamental tailwind that we're getting from generative AI. But where we think you want to begin to go with new money is or fresh money is towards those areas of the market that should at the margin be, be positioned to benefit from a inflecting Fed that also have an easier valuation backdrop. So, for example, we moved overweight financials this past week. That's predicated on banks, which are not so aggressively valued. Um, we continue overweight uh, ex consumer discretionary. We've even listed telecom and have gotten a little bit more constructive on the REIT sector here. So again, the bias is to go where there's less valuation pressure, more potential benefit from an eventual Fed pivot. Yeah, you mentioned the Fed pivot. Uh, you know, Jay Powell today seemed to offer words consistent with the idea that they are looking for the opportunity to begin uh, some easing before terribly long. I guess the question is, do you think it's going to require further weakness or do you think we're going to get a further growth scare before we get the reality of a potential uh, rate cut? Yeah, you know, my economics colleagues here at City are projecting a first cut in September with three cuts for the balance of the year. So essentially, we're arguing that under the surface, economic conditions are continuing to decelerate from here. It's a question of, of how far the Fed wants to let this get before being preemptive, if you will. So I, I think we just have to, you know, be attentive to the fact that the Fed is sort of laser focus on getting the inflation trajectory to their target level. But under the surface, you are starting to see some signs of friction or fraying around the edges, which we think just kind of is going to be enough here that as we go into the Q2 reporting period, you'll hear more corporates expressing just a little bit of macro concern going into the back half. Yeah, uh, perhaps uh, a little bit more uh, of a risk given that earnings estimates have held up so well so far. And, and to your point, implied growth uh, forecast. Uh, Scott, appreciate it. Thanks very much.